right, we want to get you back to this really compelling, awful story today. At least one biker is now under arrest after a serious case of road rage turns into a case of hit and run for your life. Let's break down this video. We'll show you what happened. It was 1.30 in the afternoon on a Sunday uh, in New York City. There's the first bump, we believe, when you see the car come up behind that uh, biker. And then all the other bikers sort of stopped to find out what happened as the biker was bumped by this black SUV. The driver then gets freaked out because everyone is swarming around him ostensibly. And then look, goes right over one of the bikers who's now been hospitalized. The rest of them then start chasing. The, the camera that you're looking at is a GoPro. Then they catch up with him, try to open the door of the car, and he takes off, terrified, no doubt. Then the gang, it, apparently the tires were slashed according to some of these reports, so he pulled off of the West Side Highway and into some of these side streets, and look at what happened then. They started smashing with their helmet into the car. They did break the windows on the car because I saw pictures of the car after. The back window also appears to have been broken. Uh, his wife was leaning out of the car and watching as they dragged him out of the car and beat him. Two black eyes uh, and other lacerations requiring stitches. All of this in front of his two-year-old daughter and his wife. What a scene that was. All right, so let's break this down in a legal sense. Jeff Gold is a former prosecutor, and Anna Yam is a defense attorney and a former prosecutor. Welcome uh, to both of you. Good to have you here. So the big question is, uh, you know, th this video, no doubt, is going to be broken down frame by frame as they try to figure out really what happened here, Jeff. Uh, and do you think that the driver also needs an attorney in this case? Well, look, leaving the scene of an accident, I mean, he, you know, he did run over uh, one of the bikers. He broke, apparently, a leg or two legs of one of the bikers and then took off. That's a, a crime in uh, most states, to leave the scene of an injury. Look, he was panicked. We know that. But nevertheless, yes, he might need a lawyer, too. I think the police were evaluating very carefully. They issued 60 tickets, but they have only made, apparently, one arrest. I think of the individual that beat him up. That exceeded any authority of a citizen's arrest. But you can understand it if you're friends, you know, were just run over and their legs were broken and a guy takes off, maybe you would take off after him too. Maybe. Uh, maybe. But we know that there's been one arrest in this, Anna. Christopher Cruz is 28 years old. Reckless endangerment, reckless driving are the charges. We don't know if they're first degree or second degree. We're waiting for some of these details here. Uh, but in terms of what you see on this tape, and that looks like the initial bump where the driver bumped the back of that uh, motorcycle, and then really all hell breaks loose in this. What do you think, Anna? You know, it would be at a complete injustice and an outrage, Martha, if this driver, Mr. Lian, was charged with anything. This man was fleeing for his life, and not just for his life, but the safety of his two-year-old daughter and his wife in the passenger seat. What else was he supposed to do? Based upon the video and the evidence that we, we see, he was in reasonable fear of imminent bodily harm or death at the time he took off. You can't blame him, and I, I submit to you, anyone in his situation would think family first. I need to protect my family. And what's really interesting about this case, Martha, is that it's not just a case about bikers' road rage. Right. It goes, it goes much deeper than that. It's about gang mentality, power in numbers, intimidation, and violence. Why? Yeah. Because these bikers felt disrespected. I mean, this group is called Hollywood Stunts. And they gather for the purpose of trying to see what kind of stunts they can pull off in the middle of Manhattan. Uh, you know, and, and there were checkpoints put up because they didn't want them to get into Times Square because apparently that didn't work out too well last year. So, Jeff, you know, when you look at, you know, all of that as part of this story, I mean, were they by their presence endangering people on, on the streets? Yeah, well, okay, let's switch it. I'm not representing the SUV driver, but now I'm representing those bikers, and I got to tell you something, it's a much more difficult job to represent those bikers. They were looking for trouble, I understand that, right. uh, They and they got what they bargained for, but, um, you know, in the end, there still was a, a, a biker whose legs were broken, and although the SUV guy was scared, he ended up with a couple of stitches, so, you know, it's a big mess, it's certainly not going in the biker's favor, but you can yeah. understand what happened here when your friend gets uh, run I, I over. Mean, I, I don't understand why, you know, why the police didn't get into the act. At some point, they, they drove for 50 blocks in this case, and we'd right. love to hear a, a little bit more about that. And did people start calling 911, either anyone on the bike or anyone in the car, to try to get the police to intervene? A lot of questions, but you guys have laid out some of the early ones uh, for us. Thank you very much, Anna and Jeff. Good to see you both.